Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to very quickly answer the question of what impedance of headphones do I need or should I buy? And that's the value of ohms that you see on the spec sheet. That's a really quick question, I'm going to answer that first. And in the second part of the video I'm actually going to take apart a pair of headphones, show you all the components and really look into how and why they work just for a bit of fun. But very quickly answering the question about impedance or ohms. To start, I'm going to define low, medium and high impedance as low impedance being about 35 or 40 ohms and below, medium impedance being around 100 ohms, it fills this middle ground, and then high impedance for me I'm saying is 250 ohms and above. The only simple principle you need to remember is that higher impedance, so higher ohm headphones, need more power or a higher voltage in order to get a good sound. Whereas low impedance headphones, lower ohms, they need much less power, less voltage comparatively to get a really good sound. This very quickly leads us on to our answer, which is it only depends on what you're plugging your headphones into. If you're only going to be plugging your headphones into your phone or your laptop, the output port there, then a low impedance, so less ohms, is actually going to sound much better. You're going to get loads of volume, really thick bass, it's going to sound great. If I was going to plug a high impedance pair of headphones, such as these 250 ohm headphones, into my phone, I could turn my phone the whole way up and I'm barely going to get any volume. It's going to sound really awful, even though these are fantastic headphones. You can, however, still use a low impedance pair of headphones with higher powered kit, such as headphone amps and audio interfaces, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Now let's look at the higher impedance headphones. So if you're going to be plugging your headphones into an audio interface with a dedicated headphone amp, this is a higher power, higher voltage output, or you have a dedicated standalone headphone amp, then you can go for a much higher impedance headphone because that source has enough power to drive these headphones that's going to sound very loud, very full. However, if you also plug your lower ohm headphones into this higher powered equipment, it will still sound good, it just means that you've got to turn down this equipment all the way down so that your ears are not completely blasted by a ton of volume. One of the reasons these higher impedance headphones exist is because traditionally a lot of studio and broadcast equipment has been very high powered, very high voltage, and if you were plugging your headphone into any part of the chain, you wouldn't want your headphones to be overloaded and to damage your ears. So having a very high impedance headphone protected you against that. And this takes us on to the confusing question of this middle ground, because some headphones, such as the DT770 Pro, which are my all-time favorite headphones from Biodynamic, come in three different models. I think there's a 32 ohm, 80 and 250 ohm model. And then it begs the question, well, what's this middle ground for? So let's say you're in a recording studio and you're using these 80 ohm headphones. This is gonna give you a lot more volume than the 250 ohms. So if you're a drummer and you're tracking drums, you put these on your head, you can hear the click track, the backing track, it's perfect, but they're not gonna overload quite as easily as the 32 ohms. So it really serves that middle ground and it's sort of a best of both. Now onto the question of which sounds better, low or high impedance. If you're an audio professional or just an audiophile, you will be able to hear the difference between low and high impedance headphones, but it's far more important to consider how the headphones are actually built, what other technologies are in there and how it's all tuned and designed because there are some absolutely incredible low impedance headphones which sound far better than some high impedance headphones. So in this case, when it comes to which sounds better and you've already addressed your application, it's sort of just a case of personal preference. But to find out more about how headphones actually work, let's now take apart these ones and take a good look at it. So you can see here that we have a pair of headphones and if I just pull this cup off here, I'm left with this protective plastic grill and housing. So I'm just gonna remove a few screws. Now don't disassemble your headphones like this because I'm gonna be breaking these in this video, but now that they're open, you can see these two little wires here, which I'll have to cut before I can remove this assembly away from the headphones. After a little more disassembly, we're left with just this, which is a protective case along with this dynamic driver assembly. So this is the most common type of headphone technology widespread across most headphones. It's called a dynamic driver. There are other technologies. Check the description to find out about those. This dynamic driver has three main parts. It has this clear 
transparent diaphragm. There's a copper voice coil and a permanent silver magnet in there. I took one apart earlier, so I'll be able to show you all these parts in much more detail in just a moment. But what this transducer does is transforms the electrical signal into a mechanical movement, pushing the diaphragm in and out. So this diaphragm here is suspended freely and it can move up and down just like this. So you can see that the coil is moving within the wire. And this movement here is what creates the sound pressure waves which we perceive as music. Let's take a look at the one that I took apart earlier. So we have this magnet here, which hopefully you can see where that comes from. It's a permanent magnet with this slot in it. So it's just a very, very typical magnet, nothing very special going on there. The bit where most of the magic happens is in this part here. So I kind of broke it when I was taking it apart, but it's sort of impossible not to, it's so fragile. So what we have here is this plastic diaphragm, it's a bit crumpled right now, and this copper coil. Now it probably just looks like a solid piece of metal to you, but if you see this wire here, you can see that I'm actually uncoiling coils of copper wire from this here. Now the copper wire isn't just suspended in the middle, it's actually connected to the edge here. And this is really important. The electric signal that's being output by your phone or your amp or whatever travels through the headphone cable and it ends up here. And the current in this coil is constantly alternating backwards and forwards. This alternating current in this copper coil paired with this magnet creates an electromagnet where the polarity keeps changing. So this just slots into this magnet here and it keeps pushing itself in and out. And how far and how quickly it pushes in and out depends on the amplitude of that signal and also the frequency of that signal. I won't go into any details too deep in this video because I don't want to overwhelm anyone, but for those of you who are sort of geeky or you know inclined to find out more, this is a very similar technology to what's used in loudspeakers. And if you check out some of the links in the description, you can find out precisely how and why these work. And the differences between the sort of cheaper models and the more expensive headphones really comes down to the dimensions, the weight, and the materials chosen in this driver assembly. So you might have a plastic material here, or you might have some special precision woven fabric. You may have a standard copper coil, or you may have tons more coils. So if you've got many, many more coils, you're going to have a higher impedance because there's going to be more distance for the electrons to travel through that wire, which means you're going to have a more resistance or more impedance in your system. The diameter of the coil might change. It might be a smaller wire, a thicker wire. This magnet in the back it might just be a standard magnet, or it could be some rare earth magnet, something very expensive with different magnetic properties that might make it more suited to higher fidelity sound. And typically what I've seen with loudspeaker and this sort of driver assembly design is that the best ones in the world are a combination of physics and scientific principles combined with art, taste, material choice. At times it can be a bit of a grey area, but it's open to a lot of discussion and debate because at the end of the day sound really is a preference and what one person prefers in material choice and magnet choice might not work for someone else's ears. But I find this sort of stuff super super fascinating and there's loads more information in the description too so that's everything for today i hope it was a bit fun and interesting for you it's a little bit different but i really enjoyed making this video and i hope to see you in the next video too have a great week bye for now